Warning. All displays of negativity will be deliciously repackaged and properly returned to sender. Only good vibes allowed beyond this point. Now if you're ready, come on in. For your invitation, sham to experience the clink, the chaos, and all of the empowerment seek you desire. You know we got some Hella hood with class, baby, I'm doing one Come sip and save us so we can spill some And if you lost your way, we'll leave the light on What's going on, Champagne Gang? Fizz fam, confidants. Welcome to the Reactorium, where we react to things going on in the world, in the news, on social media, and also on reality TV. And up this week, we have Transforming Roly. So if you're ready, let's get into it. Now, I know y'all didn't think we were going to continue without getting into our positivity and affirmations. <laughs> Take those glasses and raise them high in the air. You already know I'm sipping on my Moet and Chandon Imperial Rosé. Are you ready? Today is all about the magic of choosing you. Remember every moment you spend embracing your own light is a moment well lived. Shine bright because you are worth every bit of joy, love, and success the universe has to offer. Choosing yourself isn't just a choice. It's a celebration of the amazing person you are. So dance through life with confidence and let your sparkle light up the world. So here's to you, Confidant, for you are worth it. So episode three opens with Roly speaking with her son on the phone and letting him know that she's going to be back home. And y'all know she's laying on her stomach because she still can't sit on that ass. <laughs> So, Dashinko comes by for her consultation, and basically, he wants to know what her goals are, what she's looking to achieve, and how he can help her with that. Press pause. See? Everything in life has to have a goal. See what I be telling y'all? Whether it's weight loss, saving money, getting your mind right, no matter what you're doing in life, you need a goal. Something that you are reaching for, for a reason. Because if you don't have a reason, then it's not a goal. It's a want or a desire. How many of y'all have begun setting goals for yourself? Yeah, we're goal diggers over here. <laughs> goal tenders, honey. We are no longer doing things just because. If a goal isn't attached to it, we ain't doing it, huh? <laughs> That's right. So he tells her he's going to go over the alkaline electric diet he created for her. Now, I had no idea what this is, so I had to look it up. Electricity goes in walls and wires, not in the body, so I had to understand. Don't y'all judge me. <laughs> Hell, a new diet comes out every 0 0.00256 seconds. How the hell am I supposed to keep up? <laughs> So now I got this information from the Alkaline Electric Goddess and her website is thealkalineelectricgoddess.com forward slash T-A-E-D. So according to her website, Alkaline Electric Vegans follow Dr. Seabee's methodology, focus on balanced pH, avoids animal and dairy products, and avoids hybrid or genetically modified foods. It says alkaline electric vegans, also referred to as Seabians, follow the methodology of Dr. Seabe. They focus on the body's balanced pH. They do not consume any animal or dairy products, as well as any byproducts of animal slaughter or cruelty. They do not eat any hybrid or genetically modified fruits, vegetables, or grain. They try to abstain from any processed foods, sugars, alcohol and pharmaceuticals 
that one messed me up right there because every now and then i need a little drinky drink <laughs> champagne secrets hello <laughs> so they only eat from dr cb's nutritional guide and use herbs for healing now i can't do without meat all together but i probably could try a pescatarian diet i think that's the one where you can eat fish and seafood but to do without meat at all yeah i ain't gonna be able to do it sorry <laughs> but how many dieters do i have in the champagne gang and what diet has worked for you i'd love to know so he tells her he's also going to show her how to prepare some dishes and they are going to focus on cilantro so he's asking her what's the smallest she's ever been and what's the largest she stated her smallest was 280 and um the size that she was prior to getting these surgeries is when she was her largest which was about 330 pounds so she says she still wants to be curvaceous and a plus size girl she just really wants her midsection gone but she loves her bottom and she loves her top she just wants the midsection gone she also says she has high blood pressure now press pause again so you're willing to put your health at risk being on a show with high stress levels knowing that you have high blood pressure and can easily be triggered and then you go and get gutted like a fish and put your body through all this trauma knowing you already have high blood pressure huh got to be more careful even she says doing the shows makes it hard to keep her blood pressure low then why are you doing it so you're not concerned about getting sliced and diced and gutted and filleted and stressing your body out and you don't care about doing shows and you keep doing shows that are putting your health at risk because you you know what comes with that show make it make sense so he asked her about getting some gym time in and she says that she has a membership but she hasn't gone he's basically telling her to go at least once a week to see if she can go once a week she says she'll try to do the treadmill once to twice a day doubt it doubt very seriously that roly is going to get on the treadmill twice a day not even once a day not even once every other day but we'll see my opinion so he's telling her to switch her pasta because she loves pasta and i do too i listen an alfredo baby bye a lasagna i'm like garfield don't play with me but he's telling her to switch her pasta to an alkaline based pasta and he wants her to try to do a 21 day green juice fast he's asking her to stick to it and chow all she cares about is smoking weed and being hungry <laughs> girl that's probably what got you in this position in the first place because y'all listen one night i got so high i almost ate a whole box of cereal dry <laughs> If they are munchies. So munchies and diet do not work. <laughs> they don't go together. So unless Dushinko finna show her how to make some alkaline electric based snacks, <laughs> she in trouble. And as they are talking about eating healthier, Roly's doorbell rings and her DoorDash order has come to the door. And baby, she don't want to tell Dushinko what's in that bag. And I bet she don't. <laughs> I'm hoping this child can hold on to these results she got because it looked like she messing up already. You've put your body through all of this. It would be a shame for it to go back right back to where you were because you don't want to eat right. It would be a shame. And that's the danger of these quick fixes. You don't have the appreciation of the time and energy that it, it takes to get to where you need to go putting the work in. So you don't have the wherewithal to work to keep it because it didn't cost you anything. So to you, it doesn't matter. All you care about is the result. So then they go in the kitchen and they're about to prepare the meal. And I know I told y'all that she should do a BBW review and she still should. But another thing that Roly should consider doing that I think would be really good for her to change her image is to do a Healthy Eats cooking show. Call it Gia's Healthy Eats or Gia's Edible Mayhem or something, child. But I truly believe if she takes her eyes off baddies because that's Natalie's brand and focus on creating her own brand, she can go so much further. But these girls are so damn narrow-minded, they can't see past of Natalie's arse. So they're in the kitchen 
and they're going to make a Latin style mushroom in green sauce and she loved it. Now I'm a sucker for mushrooms. I am on pizza, a stuffed mushroom, in my pepper steak. I love mush on top of my steak. It is a must. <laughs> I love mushrooms and whatever he made looked absolutely delicious. I'm going to have to look for it and find a recipe and try it for myself. But she tasted the ceviche and she spit it all out saying she didn't like the texture. Now, I've never had ceviche before, never heard of it before, but it actually kind of looked good. I looked it up and ceviche is a traditional Latin American dish of raw seafood marinated in citrus juice and spices. The acid on the juice cooks the seafood, causing it to become opaque and firm, similar to cooking it in heat. This process is called denaturing. Ceviche is often made with fish or shellfish, but can also include shrimp and can include other ingredients like onions, chilies, garlic, cilantro, tomatoes, and avocados. But she absolutely didn't like it. She didn't. She said she got to go boo-boo. <laughs> so she ran off. Now, ceviche does look like it has a lot going on. Have y'all ever tried it? If you have, drop in the comments and let me know if you've tasted it and what it tastes like. So then her IV specialist comes by. And she's about to get some fluids and vitamins and electrolytes and stuff through an IV. She's getting her chin massage. Because remember... She had three of her four chins removed through lipo. And she also had a chemical pill. So press pause. Can y'all imagine how much pain she has to be in? I mean, really, just think about it. I remember having a C-section and my recovery from that was horrible. I had my gallbladder removed, couldn't move for two weeks. And I've also had a hysterectomy done. Absolute pain. Not at the same time now, <laughs> but I remember absolute pain. And I can also remember the pain that I was in when I tried to cough after my hysterectomy because they wouldn't leave, let me leave the hospital until I coughed. When I tell you the scream I let out, oh my God, it was the worst thing ever. And what made me even angrier is they didn't warn me about it before my surgery they told me about it afterwards and all they said was oh yeah you have to put a pillow up to your stomach when you get ready to cough ma'am what so can you imagine how much pain she has to be in from her face down to her butt i can't even imagine and i don't want to but i wonder in two years in a year or two will she still think it was worth it but in comes Kiana, and she's going to do her IV hydration. Now, I know a few people who have gotten IVs regularly. They have fluid to help you detox, fluids to give you energy, fluids to help you sleep, and apparently fluids to help you heal from a BBL. I've never had one. I have, however, had the oxygen station while in Vegas, and that one comes with a massage. That was amazing. So... I can just imagine if the oxygen makes you feel the way I felt, what the IVs should make you feel like. So she's telling them that they took 11 pounds out of her belly. Child, that's a whole baby and a half. Twins for some. My biggest baby was eight pounds, nine ounces, and that was at three weeks early. So she has to feel lighter. <laughs> I know I did. She has to. But is the inner trauma worth the outer gratification? That's my question. So they're telling her how to take care of herself when she gets home, like massaging herself for 20 to 30 minutes. They're telling her to make sure she gets her massages and to get a lot of walking in and to get lots and lots of fluid to prevent blood clotting. So she's getting B12 and magnesium. Apparently that's going to help with her muscle healing because she has some cramping. She asks them about sex and they tell her to her discretion. Her masseuse tells her she has sex the next day after her tummy tuck. They just tell her to tell him not to smack it. <laughs> and I really don't understand how you can think about anything else stabbing you after you've just undergone all this. Child, I wouldn't want nothing in me for a while. Nothing. Pain and sex ain't so... Never mind. <laughs> 
never mind baby i digress <laughs> so basically they're telling her that the aftercare is really the start of her surgery because that's what gives you the results that you want and that's really what they don't tell you it can take six months to a year for your body to heal for you to really begin to see your results so basically she's telling her it's a mental recovery as well as a physical one and you have to be mentally prepared to deal with the physical and people are never really mentally prepared to deal with what they're going to have to go through physically and to me that is absolutely insane insane it's insane to let these girls come in your office and just tell them you're going to lay on the tick on the table and your results are going to be amazing when you get up that's insane and it ought to be false advertisement they don't tell you these are the tools they'll be using this is the process when we're done with the surgery you're going to be in a lot of pain not uncomfortable Uncomfortable is riding three hours on Spear Airlines when you are 5'11 and have long legs. That's uncomfortable. Uncomfortable is laying in the same spot for long periods of time. Uncomfortable is not what happens after this surgery. They don't even want to admit it's a surgery. <laughs> Let's start there. Baby, you are going to be in a lot of pain. You will be in pain from the surgery itself. You'll be in pain from the massages. So prepare yourself. All of the fluid that was turkey basted into your body will have to be pushed out along with the buildup of fluid from your body fighting to heal and repair itself. So for a few months until the swelling goes down and we get the fluid retention under control, you will be in pain. And there's a chance that your body can reject it and you will have to start the whole process over. Are you sure you want to do this? Because this process will take a toll on you mentally, emotionally, and physically, especially when you are getting more than one done at the same time, and especially your size. But no, they lie to y'all. And all y'all can think about is this body gonna be right. I'ma turn the fuck up. I'ma throw this pretty tat in the air and it's gonna turn into sweet sunshine. <laughs> There's a reason the Bible says no man builds a tower without first sitting down and counting the cost to see if he can finish it. But I gotta know the cost in order to count it. So Roly says, hell, if somebody would have told her all of that, she probably wouldn't have done it. She lied. She is. <laughs> because even after she after she knew, she got more and more and more done. So she wouldn't have stopped because it was a result she was looking for. She didn't care what she had to do to get to it. So we're at the next day and she's getting her hair done. She's talking to her son who has apparently lost her keys. And this baby is telling her that he can go get a key made without a key. Child. <laughs> That's not how that goes, sugar. <laughs> you need a key to get a key. Y'all, that was like my sister one day thinking she was going to make some cane with baking soda and water. <laughs> I said, baby, ain't you missing something? <laughs> I think you need some coal with that cane in order for it to work. <laughs> she talking about child. I was wondering why it was just melting in the water. <laughs> I said, baby, don't tell nobody else, okay? <laughs> so you need a key to get a key, baby. So she and her manager are going to the rooftop now because they want to blaze one. And you can see she looks much smaller now. She looks good though. She really does. She could have stopped here, but she want to be big with no stomach, honey. So she kept going. So she's showing her, fi her face by her that she's supposed to be wearing and that she isn't wearing because it's ugly. And she says she ain't walking around with that on her face. But what's the point of getting these procedures done if you're not going to follow the instructions that go along with it in order to keep it up? Y'all just like doing stuff for the hell of doing it because it's a waste if you're not going to follow the instructions after the fact. What's the purpose? So now we're two months later. She's in the car with her friend and she's telling her that she can't even tell that her posture is changing. She says that she doesn't want to get too small. She still wants to be curvy. And she says she's doing it because her fans want to see her journey. All she can talk about is screwing somebody else's man. So, is that what makes y'all feel like you have a ride when you can take somebody else's man down? Is that the pinnacle of success to y'all? Is that the pinnacle of arrival? Because that's all she can talk about. 
So you don't think you can have a man if he don't belong to someone else? What are we saying as women when we talk like this, right? I, I don't want nothing that belongs to somebody else. I don't know what the maintenance is on it. And I'm not trying to pay for somebody else's upkeep. No, thank you. Don't pass gold. Don't collect $200. No, get on now. Go on back to where you made your bed at. Because I'm not auditioning for your backup role. Go back to your first lady, sweetie. I'm not your side quest. I'm not your pit stop on your love highway. I'm not your quick fix, your detour, or your layover. Stay on the route you're committed to. So she's back at the clinic. And she's getting her back carved and her rump roasted again. They're marking where they're going to be removing the fat from because she's having it removed and basted in her ass again. They're also marking where they're going to be adding fat to her butt to augment it because I told you after the first BBL, the only part that looked different to me, especially with her clothes off, is this rub around right at the top of her butt where it looks like they concentrated all of the fat into. So she's going to get it fixed with her back lipo. Now she has a lot of rolls in her back, so she want all the rolls gone. The doctor in the corner is looking like, what have we gotten ourselves into? <laughs> they position her on the massage table for the third time. Because remember, this is procedure four and five. So we had the stomach lipo and the double BBL. We've had the chin lipo and the chemical pill. And now we're getting the back lipo and another BBL. It just seems like a lot to put your body through. It just really does. But this is what insecurity will drive you to. Taking risks that you really don't have to take. Y'all should know the procedure by now. Step one, small injections to numb the skin where the katana slim will be inserted. Step two, inserting the baby katana to numb the area where the Hattori Hanzo is going to create the first set of I-10 roadways to make it easy for step three where the sucking of the fat from one spot will happen and repeating the process to insert it in the other. And she's still sore. You know it hurts. And if she's ooing and eyeing with this little needle, you can imagine what's coming next. Uh-huh. She is hell gnawing and wait, wait, waiting. She starts crying. They're telling her to breathe like she in labor. So they're finally done. No more rub around top ass. It's nice and round. So now she's walking to the ride with her friend. Press pause. Isn't she supposed to have a wheelchair or something? I thought most girls who get BBLs get a wheelchair and personal delivery to their vehicle. They not walking her out or nothing. Just based you up and send you on your way, huh? <laughs> so she goes back to the hotel and baby, she gets bucket naked and gets in bed. She don't want nothing touching her. <laughs> and shouldn't she have been in a faha right away? Wouldn't you need that compression right away to start pressing that fluid out? Or is it customary to wait a few days? Because her back looks no different to me. Same amount of rolls she had before she got the Hattori Hanzo special. Now we're four days later, right? She's getting ready to go back to the clinic. And y'all, she's so slew-footed and knock knee. <laughs> Baby, them feet going as far as the east is from the west. <laughs> so they're headed to the clinic because Rolly is about to give them a piece of her mind. Child. She getting ready to get her massage and she's upset that she's in the same area as the regular folk. See, I told y'all, Zeus has these girls' heads so geeked up that they think they're bigger than they actually are. She thinks she's supposed to get the Beyonce treatment and get a whole wing blocked off for her because she's an influencer. My question is, what are you influencing? But a bunch of women who were insecure as you are to go and get a quick fix just like you did to solve their problem. You're Zeus famous. You haven't been in any movies and any other TV shows, just Zeus. And now you're too good to be around anybody else. Child, please. Let's continue. So she's saying she's not doing any more surgeries with them. She says she has two booty cheeks at the bottom. And here's the problem. <laughs> Reputable plastic surgeons will tell you that the results vary from the with the vet with the best surgeons they can't determine what your outcome is going to be they are attempting to put liquefied fat into places where it will enhance 
They can't guarantee that the fat will sit where you want it to sit. The body is in, is in control after it's injected back into you. But she's unhappy and she's done with goals. So her masseuse is pointing out that it should be rounded and it shouldn't have indents and crevices and lines fitting through it. She's saying that it should have been fixed the first time because they saw that she had three booty cheeks and didn't fix it. She said they saw her butt was sitting on her back and they still added more fat in it without fixing the problem that was there first. The masseuse says she don't need any more and proceeds to smack her ass. <laughs> Let me repeat that. You are the masseuse and you know what she's been through. And you would smack her ass several times, might I add. Child Rowley looked at that woman like she was about to give her a two-piece and a biscuit. Because how don't you know not to hit somebody ass who just had three BBLs? <laughs> and you're the professional. She asked her if it hurts. And Rowley like, girl, are you dumb or no? Nah? Because I just had surgery. What you think? <laughs> Rowley tells her, okay, that's it. I'm done. Sayonara, hasta la vista. Let me up. Let me get my ish. It's time to go. I'm done. <laughs> Roly said, you got your content. I'm done with it. Now, Roly, these people gave you a free surgery now. What did you expect from a free surgery? She expected to get off that table looking like cash down. Nicki Minaj, maybe. Cardi. <laughs> it was free from the amount of videos that I watched on YouTube on goals from the girls who went three years ago. Baby, you shouldn't have went anyway. <laughs> So I don't know how you agreed to go with what I've seen on, on YouTube. That tells me y'all did no research. Not only that, the number of complaints that's on the Better Business Bureau. Y'all don't think to check things like that out before you run to these places to get carved and sliced up? This girl I watched said she went with a group of people and everybody was in their procedures screaming and crying for their lives. <laughs> baby what y'all didn't check this stuff out so they're telling her that they don't have her faja size they try to give her a smaller one and it didn't fit so now she half past hot and a quarter to boiling honey she said she didn't have her faja and the doctor said he didn't know she didn't have one she's telling them they all unprofessional because they should be communicating and they should have had her faja ready she's saying that her name holds more weight than a clinic wrote Bro, babe, your name holds weight at Zeus. It's not even a lot of bloggers that's covering the show. You have your fans, but your name doesn't hold that much weight. It doesn't. So she's upset and she leaves without her faha, which is crazy to me because the girls that I have seen show their BBL journey, they were dripping fluid and blood and all that all through their faha. And I've barely seen any drippage from her and she hasn't been wearing a faha. So is that normal? Is she draining properly? Do she have fluid still backed up in her? I know she's not compressing because she don't have a fire. So she leaves after cussing him out. And that's where episode three ends. Drop in the comments to let me know what you think about episode three of Transforming Roly. Also, let me know what you think about goals not being prepared to give Roly what she needed after her surgery. Because not having a faha after a BBL is insane to me. I almost think she's the one that should be filing a lawsuit. <laughs> Free or not, you're supposed to be prepared to give me what you said you're offering. So let me know. Make sure you like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when we have a new show. Consider joining the Champagne Gang. It is fam. Become a confidant. And if you're not too sure, don't worry about it. We'll leave the light on. <laughs> Consider supporting the channel and send some fizzles to the Cash App. Cash App is on the screen. Thank you for joining me in the Reactorium for another episode of Transforming Rowley. Until next time, confidants, always remember, if it doesn't cause you to elevate, it's causing you to depreciate. Now raise those glasses, clink, and let's drink. Till we meet again. Ta-ta. Shit.